Welcome back everybody. So you got your first stethoscope and you've been listening to everything, but you still want to look like a professional who knows what they're doing. Well, in this video, we're going to cover the parts, uses, and care of your stethoscope, as well as where to listen to heart, lung, and bowel sounds. And finally, we'll go over some tips and tricks to make you looking like the pro we know you are. So starting up here at the top, we have the headset of the stethoscope. And this is where when you get your new stethoscope, they'll come with a couple different options for your earpieces. These can come off and you can adjust them so that they have earpieces that fit your ear canals. Really important to, to make sure that these fit well so that you hear a good crisp sound when you're listening. Next up is the tube. And this is the long rubber tube that moves between your headset and your chest piece. And this is great because you can really personalize your stethoscope here with a lot of different colors that are really fun. And they also help you remember which stethoscope is yours. Personal experience, I will say don't get a black or a dark blue stethoscope. Get something that's a different color because black and dark blue are very, very common. And it would be very easy for you to set your stethoscope down or let somebody borrow it and you'll never see it again. These are pretty expensive. So you wanna make sure that you have something that stands out that is unique to you and that's easy for you to see and identify when you leave a patient's room. The diaphragm is used for high to mid frequency sounds. This would be things like air moving in and out of your lungs, listening to your different heart sounds at the different posts, as well as listening to bowel sounds as things move through your intestines in the different quadrants. The bell is used for listening to low frequency sounds. Low frequency sounds are often associated with pathologies, such as heart murmurs or mitral valve stenosis. Finally, the last part about the bell or the diaphragm is that you can have them custom engraved to have your name on it or something else that you would like in case you lose this or so that you can identify it later. All right, now that we've gone over the anatomy of the stethoscope, let's make sure we can put it on correctly. To do this, you wanna look at the headset and you'll notice that it has an angle to it. So you wanna make sure that that point is always going towards the front of your face. If you put it in backwards, you won't be able to hear anything and it'll feel weird in the back of your ears. Some people even say that it hurts. So to make sure that this goes on forward, make sure the point is towards the front and you can actually just rub it over your face as you put it back into your ears. This will make sure that it's facing the right direction. Otherwise, you can just look at it and say, okay, great, point to the nose and it goes, easy. Then you wanna take a look at your chest piece and you want to make sure that you have the right chest piece for what you're trying to do. So if you're listening to lung sounds or just basic heart sounds, you wanna make sure you have the diaphragm. So you give that a light little tap and you'll hear it pretty loudly in your ears. You wanna make sure that that's where it's at. So that when you put it on the patient, you know that you're listening for the right things. If you need the bell, same thing. You just twist it nine, or 180 degrees and then you can hear it on this side. When you tap the diaphragm, you won't be able to hear it tapping. All right, so now that we have that down, we need to make sure that we know how to clean this once we're done listening to a patient. The biggest thing is that patients have diseases on them, they have bacteria, we also do on all of our hands and everything, and we wanna make sure that this is clean when we move on to the next patient to use it. So it's important that you clean both the diaphragm and the bell, as well as any part of the hose that you touched with a alcohol swab or alcohol wipe. There are also things called cavi wipes, which are great, but you wanna make sure that you use a gray top or a purple top. If you use the orange top, that's covered in bleach and it'll kill a lot of things. And there's times where you need to do that for specific patients. However, you wanna make sure that you kind of clean that off after it's disinfected because you don't wanna put something covered with bleach on somebody's skin. It'll cause a lot of irritation and problems. Cool, so now it's time to do the fun part and actually listen to some sounds with the stethoscope. You can listen on yourself or if you have somebody else that you live with, you can listen to them. So I'm going to refer to the heart sounds as lub dub. Lub is the first heart sound you hear. And what that is, is when the mitral and the tricuspid valve both close. This is when the blood from the atria fills the ventricles and then the ventricles start contracting and close those valves. Now the second sound that you'll hear is the dub sound. That happens when both the atrial and the pulmonary valves close shut. So the first sounds we're gonna to listen to is actually the dub, the second sound of the heart sounds. So let's put our point to the nose and in it goes. And then we're gonna take and make sure we're listening to the bell, so gentle taps. And then you're gonna find your sternum and your second intercostal space, which is the second rib space between your second and third ribs. So you find your first intercostal space just below your clavicles, and then you go down one more and you can feel that. Then you go to your sternum, which is in the middle of your chest. 
And just to the right side of that, in the second intercostal space, is where you will hear your aortic valve go dub. Go ahead and listen now. Good. Then move just across your sternum, and in that same second intercostal space on the left side of your sternum, that's where you're going to hear your pulmonic valve. Go ahead and listen to that. Good. Then we're going to move down one more space on our left side to the third intercostal space, and that's what's called Herb's Point. And that's where you should hear the split between the S1, the, the lub, and the S2, the dub, the best. Good. Now, if you move down one more intercostal space, so you should be between your fourth and fifth ribs, that's where you're going to hear your tricuspid valve, which is the valve between the right atrium and ventricle. Good. Finally, we're going to find our clavicle in the middle of it, and this is called the midclavicular line. You're gonna follow that down until you get to your fifth intercostal space, which is usually right along the same line as the patient's nipple, and then just underneath it to the fifth intercostal space. That's where you're gonna hear your mitral valve. That's the valve on the left side of the heart between the left atria and the left ventricle. Pretty cool, huh? Now we're going to listen to some respiratory sounds. This is breathing. So what we want to do is make sure that we're still on the diaphragm, give that a little tap, and then place that, find your clavicle again, and go just below it into that first intercostal space. And then take a deep breath. In and out. You should be able to hear that the air is moving in and out of your lungs. It's easier to hear it on somebody else when you aren't breathing, but for the purposes of this, that's what we're going with. Then you move to the other side and you compare. You want to make sure that you compare both sides bilaterally, right at one after another, because you're comparing them to each other. They're acting as their own controls. So then take another breath. And that's the top of your lungs. Both of those should sound the same unless there's some sort of pneumonia or disease in there. Then for the front, you want to move down four to five inches and try to take another breath sound. You want to listen to a total of four spots on the front. So it'll start up at the midclavicular, then go to the other side, then you can go down four to five inches, take a breath, and then listen to the other side. And it should be equal bilaterally is what you're looking for. All right, so the next part we're going to check is our axillary space. This gives us our mid or lateral lung fields. So axilla just means armpit. So you're going to have the patient lift their arm, and then listen pretty much at the base of their armpit, have them take a deep breath in and out. Then go down another three to four inches and take another breath. Make sure that your, your diaphragm is not on a rib bone. It'll be really hard to hear. You wanna make sure that you're between two ribs. So then have them take a second breath. All right, the last part is the back. And placement here is very important because if you put your stethoscope over the scapula or the shoulder blade, it'll muffle or hide a lot of the sounds and you won't be able to hear anything. Then you go to the top medial closest to the spine part of that and you place your stethoscope there for the first one. Tell them to relax, put their shoulders back, and then take a deep breath. And you're gonna listen on each side, then move down below the scapula and a little bit farther lateral or away from the spine. And then you're gonna listen again, both sides, and then finally move towards the tip, which will be a little bit farther out. It'll almost be in that midclavicular line, but on the back. And then you're going to listen there as well. And what you're listening for at the bases, which is the bottom two spots, you're listening for the sound of almost like hair rubbing together. And those are called rails. It's a fine crackling sound that indicates that there's fluid or congestion down at the base of the lungs. And then the final spots we're going to listen to are the bowel sounds. Now with the bowel sounds, it's important to listen to bowel sounds before you do any palpation of the abdomen. Because when you start pressing on the abdomen, it can start moving things and start some peristalsis. But you want to listen first to make sure that that's happening on its own without you instigating it. So to start, I like to start in the right lower quadrant because that's where your cecal junction is between your small intestine and your large intestine. And there's usually a lot of movement there. So if there's any movement at all, you'll hear it there. 
Then you can move from there, that's in your right lower quadrant. Then you can move up to just underneath your rib cage into your right upper quadrant. Listen to bowel sounds there. As soon as you hear some gurgling or some movement, you're good. And then you can move over to your left upper quadrant, which is over by where your stomach, your pancreas, and your the upper part of your small intestine is. You listen, you should be able to hear bowel sounds moving and gurgling there as well. And then finally you move to your left lower quadrant, which all that's down there is the last part of your colon right before somebody poops or has diarrhea. And then also your small intestine, the last parts of it as it kind of moves across your abdomen towards the cecal junction. All right, moving on to the last part, tips and tricks. Now, before we get there, if this has been helpful to you and you've enjoyed what you've seen, please give me a like and hit that subscribe button so you can see more content in the future that I make to make you the best healthcare professional you can be. All right, so the first tip that we're gonna cover is when you're giving an exam to a patient, it's best practice to point on yourself to where you're gonna be placing the stethoscope, particularly with female patients as there's a lot of sensitive anatomy on the chest. So the second tip is tube placement. So when you're holding the stethoscope, try not to hold the tube as when your fingers rub against it, you'll hear that sound in your ears and it muffles or hides a lot of the other sounds you're looking for from the patient. It's best to try and hold onto the bell or the diaphragm, the metal part directly, and not move it on their skin as you're listening. However, there are times where it's a little bit hard to hold on to that bell and still maintain a patient's modesty. So when you're listening particularly to Herb's point, that third spot between the third and fourth intercostal space on the left, it's best to hold on to the neck of your stethoscope and slide it down to where you need it to be to hear and then pull it back out. And again, this is why you point to where you're gonna be listening so that they know what to anticipate. Also, with heart sounds, when you get down to the fourth and the fifth listening position, it's best to ask the patient to lift their breast for you. And they'll do that. They'll be happy to move that out of the way so that you aren't touching or making anybody feel uncomfortable while you're doing your examination. And the final thing that I recommend is wearing your stethoscope around your neck might make you look cool, but it gets heavy and cumbersome. And as you're moving around, it starts flopping and might hit a patient or something. So the best thing to do, in my opinion, is get one of these. And this is just a little stethoscope holder that clips onto your belt or your scrubs. You can wear this in EMS, on an ambulance, you can wear this in a hospital, and it works great. This is just Velcro so your stethoscope can go in here and it'll look like this. And the other thing I love about the way that this looks when it's like this is that it's nice, it's compact, and then these earpieces point towards your body so that as it's riding on you, your stethoscope won't get caught on beds or sheets or whatever else is in the hospital, even your arms walking around. I highly recommend one of these. My mother-in-law got me one for my birthday a few years ago, and I, and th this was a game changer for me. Otherwise I was just carrying my stethoscope around in my pocket and it was always a mess. It was always getting caught on things. So highly recommend one of these. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you want to find out how to be a better medical practitioner, check out my channel for study with me videos and other useful videos. Until then guys, as my buddy Garrett told me, you can't spell doctor without DL. Now look like this.